Welcome to the ABMP podcast. My name is Darren Buford. I'm the editor in chief of Massage and Bodywork Magazine and senior director of communications for ABMP. I'm joined by my co host, Kristen Coverly, licensed massage therapist and director of professional education for ABMP. Our goal is to connect with luminaries and experts in and around the massage, bodywork, and wellness profession in order to talk about the topics, trends, and techniques that affect our listeners' practices. Our guests today are Alyssa Haynes and Michael Reynolds. Michael Reynolds. Our guests today are Alyssa Haynes and Michael Reynolds. These two are the wonder duo behind Massage Business Blueprint. Alyssa is a practicing massage therapist for 15 years, and Michael is a former massage therapist, financial advisor, and tech entrepreneur. Both happen to be columnists for Massage and Body Work Magazine with our column Blueprint for Success. And for more information about them, please visit their site at massagebusinessblueprint.com. Hello, friends. Hi. Hey, Darren. Hey, Kristen. Hello. So welcome. I wanted to jump in. Uh, we've worked together over the past year during 2020 in your column and online with your Mind Your 2020, Mind Your Money 2020 series. And all of that was, of course, planned pre-COVID. So we continued with that theme throughout the year, but you did jump in and do an extra special column for us in this special edition of Massage and Body Work magazine that was COVID related and your piece was called Financially Surviving COVID-19. We want to continue with that theme today and just chat with you about the money lessons coming out of COVID. Yeah, and I want to jump right in. Um, we have, I know that through your business, Massage Business Blueprint, you interact regularly with massage therapists about finances. So you hear all the stories, good, bad, and other. Uh, so what can you tell us? Like, what have people been saying? What's the, what has the pandemic exposed about what practitioners were doing right and wrong before mandatory stay-at-home orders began and people were forced to close their business? What have we learned? Yeah, and this pandemic was just a magnifying glass for all of the good and the bad. And it really, like every other aspect of our society, has really uh, created a bigger divide between who's doing great and who is not. So for us, we really saw that people who treated their business like a business, people who were tracking their income and expenses, people who filed their taxes in a timely manner, they were, they were able to get all of the assistance quickly that was available. But for people who weren't handling everything in a timely manner, who couldn't very clearly say, this was what line 31 on my Schedule C was last year, this was my net income from my business, they missed out or they got further behind because it was harder to deal with the paperwork needed by unemployment insurance or the pandemic uh, unemployment assistance or the PPP loan or the EIDL loan. It was all, uh, you, could, you could very easily see how easy or hard stuff was gonna be for someone based on their previous ability and structure and record keeping. I was actually really impressed by how many massage therapists did have it together. I think I came into creating like the Mind Your Money 2020 with this thought that like 90% of massage therapists do not know what's going on in their money with their business, which is such a, a spoiled way to come into it. And, um, but I was really impressed with how many people did have it together. And when this hit in March, how many people had already uh, reconciled 2019 and filed their taxes. But there's always that divide and we definitely saw how people who didn't track their money well missed out on a lot of options. Just like in the past, they might've missed out on a lot of tax deductions because they weren't organized or not gotten a great car loan or mortgage because they hadn't tracked their money really well within their business. So it's, it definitely magnified who was super organized and who wasn't. How may have MT's actions uh, pre-pandemic really specifically might have affected their grants and loans and government assistance options? Yeah, so people who hadn't filed their taxes for 2018, people who were a year behind, they didn't get that $1,200 check from the feds. Um, they might get it eventually, but they had to wait another year. They're going to have to wait till they file their 2020 taxes to get that $1,200. People who were slow to file 2019 taxes, they couldn't quickly and efficiently say how much money their business earned, which was really relevant in calculating unemployment insurance and pandemic unemployment assistance, how much you were eligible for an EIDL loan. If they couldn't apply for that, they couldn't get the EIDL grant, which was a free thousand dollars. If they didn't have those numbers, they couldn't accurately calculate how much they were eligible for the PPP loan, which is forgivable. Again, free money. There are people who missed out on tens of thousands of dollars of free money because they hadn't filed their taxes for 2019 yet. 
Uh, Can I ask you a question like, really quickly? Sorry, I, I just I'm, hit I'm, my heart. I hurt my heart, Darren. Oh. I'm just having a moment of like <laughs> pain for my fellow therapist. Just give me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question really quickly about filing? Do you recommend filing annually or quarterly for massage therapists? Well, it's two different things. So you file your annual taxes for the previous mm -hmm. year. Um, that's your records of everything that you've made and everything that you spent on your business. And part of that filing is the records of your quarterly estimated taxes, which are, you know, is an estimated payment based on what you'll owe at the end of the year. Like when you have an employer, they just take it out every week or every pay period, right? You have to be, when you work for yourself, you have to be your own best employer and your own best payroll system, right? You have to take that out and pay it to government quarterly. The government doesn't want to wait until the following April to get the taxes off the income you earned in January, February, March of that, you know, that previous year. They want it on April 15th, like, and then they want it on June 15th and September 15th and January 15th. They don't, there, you get penalized if you don't pay enough throughout the year to cover most of what you'll owe by the end of year calculations. They, they're not going to give you a free loan. And I'll say this is the number one thing that trips up massage therapists over and over and over is not paying your quarterly estimates. Um, they just don't get around to it. I'll say all business owners in general have this problem a lot of times, but you just don't get around to it. It piles up. You've got a huge tax bill surprise. Um, you get behind. Um, I've seen so many massage therapists that are years behind in their taxes because they didn't keep up on their quarterly estimates. So so yeah, you're not really filing every quarter, you're paying every quarter and then filing annually, but you want to keep up on those quarterly payments. And I always like to also add one caveat is that should be paid out of a personal account. A lot of massage therapists will pay their quarterly estimates from their business account, but your business is not being taxed. It passes through as personal income if you're an LLC, sole proprietorship, or S-corp, which is very common for everybody. So you want to make sure you're paying that from a personal account and keeping that really, really separate and budget and for it. I want to kind of go uh, off book a little bit here too, because one of the things I realized is that there's a lot of massage therapists who have no desire to stay connected with the massage world. Like they just want to do their work in their massage room, in their own little business, in their own little town or whatever. And one of the huge problems I saw was that so many therapists who had not built community were really people who hadn't read their magazines, people who hadn't read the blog posts or the emails that come from ABMP or anyone else or any other massage related stuff really got left behind. And it was amazing to me to see people finally like getting online, getting involved with massage communities in like August and not having heard about pandemic unemployment assistance. Like, Dude, you could have been collecting since like March. Like yeah, you're people in July saying, what's PPP? You know, <laughs> like, like what is this stuff? I've heard about this stuff, but. There's a real head in the sand that happens for everyone, not just in massage, but that made itself very apparent. And I found, you know, friends I have, people who've had free premium memberships to Massage Business Blueprint <laughs> for like five years, <laughs> texting me and being like, hey, what's the PPP? And I would be like, we've literally recorded seven podcasts about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, like so and you know I it's fine like my grandmother listens to the podcast but it's okay if massage therapists don't but like like you have chosen to disconnect from one the general news business information and what's going on in your profession I don't want to get your text message in September about what should I ask oh I have a client who had COVID in March what do I do girl Ruth Werner has told you like seven times in five different media what to do go find it, which is so, you know, obviously like I, I do feel for people who have disconnected for reasons. It's just too stressful for them. And at the same time, you know, I want to meet people where they're at. So I happily send them links, but if people chose to be disconnected, of course they're going to be behind. And I hope that this encourages a lot of people, not just to get their money together, but to get their community together. So they're, they have better resources when the second wave hits or the next pandemic hits or the next natural disaster, because it's going to happen. Yeah. And I think sort of one of the themes of this podcast and a lot of the communication that's happening right now is this was a wake up call. We're learning some lessons and those lessons will be applied during this time, but also going forward, right? Like, I think this is just like you were saying at the beginning, this just exposed things that we could be doing differently all along the way. Um, yeah, the same things that have come up now are the same things that are going to make your business strong, no matter what the timing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to touch on something too, Michael, you, you brought up earlier about paying quarterly taxes from your personal account versus your business. So mm -hmm. 
for people who aren't sure about what to do with their money, how to separate it, how not to separate it, what do I do? Why is it important to keep business and personal money separate? Yeah, big pet peeve of mine. So separating your your business and personal money has uh, a lot of advantages, and it's really important because one, it's it's just raw organization. Uh, when you blend your business and your personal money together, you are saying, "Hey, this is not a business. This is kind of some hobby I do, and it's kind of just part of me and my life." And and you're not really treating it like an asset. So I'm really big on treating your business like an asset. You don't have to be super formal or crazy about it, but you want to think of it as, "Hey, this is a." business that I manage. It's not my whole identity or, you know, everything about me. It's something I do that I love, but it's an asset that I need to manage. I need to keep isolated in a business and financial context. I need to help it grow and I need to, to produce an income for me. It should produce an income and a return for me. And when you think of it like that, it's a lot more healthy, I think, just mentally. And then two, when you blend business and personal like if you buy personal things with business accounts and business things with personal accounts you start to the more you do that the more you open yourself up to risk of your personal finances being audited if the irs wants to investigate your business account so if you're if you're being audited you want to have that separation or that liability veil for example if you have some liability issue in your business you don't want that to bleed into your personal assets and have someone coming after your house so by keeping your business and your personal finances separate, you are doing your best to maintain that corporate veil, so to speak, or that business veil that is ideally between you and your business so that you kind of keep your your personal assets more protected. And like Alyssa mentioned before, also, it's just good reporting. If you're, if you're messing with money flowing back and forth, it's not really, if it's, if it's blending stuff that should be separated, then you're going to have inaccurate financial statements and that's going to affect your ability for things like government aid during pandemic like this, um, tax reporting, all sorts of things. So uh, a lot of really good reasons to keep things separated. Yeah. And what do you, do you have a recommendation for people how often they quote unquote pay themselves or move money from their business account into their personal? Should it be on a regular basis or just when needed or what do you recommend? Yeah, we talk about this in the the webinar we're going to talk about as well, but there's a couple of ways that we recommend. So I think, Alyssa, you like to say either on a regular basis or a percentage of income. Uh, I'm a big fan both. of regular. But yeah, yeah. yeah, both. Well, yeah. whether you pay yourself um, a flat amount or a percentage of your gross, um, it needs to be structured. It needs to be either weekly or every other week or once a month. But you, I think it's important to take a regular draw from your business um, the time, the timing doesn't matter so much to me as long as it's consistent. Yeah, don't make it an afterthought. Pay yourself as if you were paying an employee. You said something really important, and I've seen you write about it as well before, but it's treating your business like a business. And that yeah. goes back to so many massage therapists potentially treating it like a hobby. And if it's a hobby, that's okay. But do the brain work, do the thinking, and do the deciding. So whichever it is, it's intentional. If your massage practice is a hobby, that's great. You just need to make sure you're covering your costs and you're happy about the amount of time you're working. What a lovely position to work from. That's wonderful. I want to do that one day. I want, that's what I want my semi-retirement to be. But if you want your business to be a business, which is to say you want it to financially support you, then you, you got to do some of this foundational work so that you know how much you're making, how to increase or decrease that depending on your own needs and wants, and what your expenses are, and how to increase and decrease those depending on your own wants and your needs and, and your schedule and your life as it evolves. My, business, my practice does not look like what it looked like 15 years ago, and it shouldn't. I have learned by making a lot of mistakes how to change how much I'm working, how to change how much I'm charging, how to change my expenses. And uh, it's okay either way, but those, those approaches should be intentional. One of the other areas that we see massage therapists trip over sometimes is how important it is to track and claim cash income. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh man. How much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we, you know, this is a thing. Um, one, it's really important to track your, your tips and any other cash income. One, because you're legally obligated to. So if you're not, when you sign your tax return, you're, you're lying. Um, cash and tips are income and it matters. And it matters because people who didn't report their cash, 
they didn't get as much benefit. So, you know, if a client hands you, hands you cash and you pocket it and you don't claim that, oh, great, you're not paying taxes on it. But you also got a lot less in your unemployment award and your POA award. You got a lot less offered to you with your PPP loan, which again, forgivable, free money. If you use it the right way, it becomes a grant. So people who didn't claim their income, they got far lower benefits. And we wouldn't think that's a big deal because normally we don't get unemployment benefits as small business owners and independent contractors, but we did. And there were a lot of people whose awards were half of what they could have been had they been truthful about their income in the past. A lot of people don't realize they have to claim that. So I don't want to like, you know, tell anybody how horrible they are for doing it wrong. A lot of people didn't know we weren't taught this. I thought it was okay to pocket my tips the first couple of years I was working. You know, I've definitely given, you know, a family member a massage who gave me cash for it. And like, you know, I charged them half price and put it in my pocket before I realized that that was not okay. We've all done this. Not everybody comes into owning a massage business with a, you know, a financial background, but now, you know. Let's move forward with that. Yeah. And actually, when you're talking about like, we weren't taught that, I for years taught business classes in core programs. And I would literally teach this lesson, how important it was to claim all your cash tips and re, you know receipts and everything for all the purposes, mortgages, blah, 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 all the whole list. I literally had people laugh out loud at me in class. <laughs> so I think that that was, you know, it's telling, but it's something that people really need. This is, again, one of those wake up calls maybe now where people will realize how important it is. This was like yeah. the moment where that lesson hits home. Well, okay, so I want to add, behind that. Yeah. I want to add one thing onto that. It's also all these things we're talking about are they lead up to leading a clean business or running a clean business. And there's such, something so empowering about running a clean business. Um, when your when your finances are organized, when you're claiming all your income is you know cash included, when everything's by the book, when your books are clean, when your taxes are on time, like when you're running a clean business, you just sleep better at night. So it's good health wise and well being wise as well to do all these things we're talking about because you just have a a more peaceful sense about yourself when you're running a clean business. Agreed, absolutely. Okay, so we've got about three minutes left or so for this last question. So we know COVID served as a wake-up call for the profession. What are a few things massage therapists can do moving forward to get it right this time? Not only before another crisis hits, finger crossed, please no, um, but just in general. All right, so I follow this Homeland Security Specialist out of Boston and uh, Juliet Kayyem. And one of the things she said right at the beginning was a crisis hits a community as it finds it. So if this crisis hit your business, and you found that you weren't able to quickly figure out how much money you made last year, if you weren't able to quickly know where to find Schedule C, line 31 or 32, I forget, and know how much your net income was from your business, if you got to look at your own business and find the weaknesses, find where you were at and how that helped you or hurt you and fix those things. For me, it was that I, I had to spend a lot of time in the middle of March catching my year up. Like I, 2019 was fine, but I had done nothing with 2020, which is fine. We were like 10 weeks into it. What are you going to do? Um, that pushed me to do a better weekly accounting. Not that I've made a penny since March 12th, but that, that really helped me put things together in a more organized manner. So look at what you struggled with, maybe it was communicating with your clients. Maybe you realized you didn't have a master list of email addresses or phone numbers for your clients or addresses to send an I miss you card. Whatever that weakness was that was magnified, hone in on it and fix it. And if you can only fix one thing of five problems that you had, baby steps, man. We're all doing the best we can. What do you got, Michael? I would add all that and uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, so much of the time we get stuck, we're like, oh, I don't understand accounting. I don't understand taxes. I don't understand investing, like all this stuff. Um, or I don't understand just basic cash flow stuff. Like ask for help. Um, a good accountant is not that expensive and they will pay for themselves 10 times over in the grief you will avoid and the benefit you will get. So, you know, hire a good accountant to teach you things or to do the books for you or to help you with things like this. Join a community like ABMP's community or our community. Um, ask for help from professionals or from peers who can help you with this stuff. Um, if you feel stuck, you don't have to DIY. You don't have to do it all yourself. Um, get the help you need and don't be afraid to reach out. 
Yeah, great. And we know this was just the tip of the financial iceberg. Um, luckily, though, podcast listeners and viewers of the special video version that we're filming for the ABMP CE Summit, we just added a new 90-minute CE course from Alyssa and Michael in the ABMP Education Center called Mind Your Money, based off of the content from their massage and bodywork column. So if you're interested, check it out at abmp.com slash CE. It's great content and it just takes this conversation and builds and builds and builds. You can Thank find you. out their year long column at abmp.com slash mind your money, money, abmp.com slash money. Look at that. And there's uh, thank lots you. of videos and stuff too. So oh. it's not just like boring print. We actually video demo the stuff we're talking about. <laughs> and you, both of you have been producing videos in the digital edition, a digital edition of massageandbodywork.com, massage and body work for each issue that's available on massageandbodywork.com. Thank you so much, Alyssa and Michael for joining us today. And where can listeners find out more information about you specifically? Massagebusinessblueprint.com. Massage oh, there you go. <laughs> Why don't you say it again, Alyssa? So <laughs> Massagebusinessblueprint.com. I feel like we should all say it. Massagebusinessblueprint.com. Massage 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. Take good care. Bye-bye.